If you've ever wanted to experience the far future, then Chronix might be the process for you. It's a technique used to store a person's body at an extremely low temperature with the hope of one day reviving them. You may have seen this method used in many sci-fi films, for example, The Demolition Man. But the science behind this process isn't just fictional, it actually does exist, and the technique is being performed even today. However, it is still in its very early infancy. The idea of being cryogenically suspended is that if you die from a disease or condition that is currently incurable, scientists could vitrify your body. Then one day, in the near or far future, when the technology has been created to revive your body and the cure for you has been discovered, you will be brought back, cured and allowed to carry on your life, only in the future. The process would start with the patient being declared legally dead. Then, an emergency response team from the Chronics facility they signed up to would stabilise the body, supplying the brain with enough oxygen and blood to preserve minimal function until they can be transported to the suspension's facility. The body is then packed in ice and injected with an anticoagulant. Once the body is at the Chronics facility, the team remove the water from the cells and replace it with a type of antifreeze to prevent cells from freezing and shattering. The body is then cooled on a bed of dry ice until it reaches minus 130 degrees Celsius and then it is inserted into an individual container that is filled with liquid nitrogen at a temperature of around minus 196 degrees Celsius. Currently, it costs more than £100,000 to have your entire body preserved. The kind of price that somebody like Walt Disney would have been able to pay all those years ago. However, the fact that everybody thinks they know about the famous Mr Disney being preserved through cryogenics after death is actually incorrect. It is only an urban legend. Walt was cremated in 1966 after he passed away. In actual fact, James Bedford became the first human to be cryogenically preserved on the 12th of January 1967. Currently, there are around 150 people that have had their entire body stored in liquid nitrogen in the United States, while around 80 have had just their heads or brains preserved. So does it actually work? Will science ever be able to bring back James Bedford? Well, currently none of the companies offering cryogenic suspension have successfully revived anyone and don't expect to be able to anytime soon. One of the biggest problems with this process seems to be that if scientists do not warm the body at exactly the right speed and temperature, the cells could form ice crystals and shatter. However, there are studies into some frogs that have a natural antifreeze in their cells which can protect them if they become completely frozen solid. This may one day be adapted to the human body, potentially solving this problem. Another method that may be available in the future is nanotechnology. These tiny little bots might make it possible to repair human cells if it becomes damaged during the chronic process. This may sound like a sci-fi story, but some scientists have predicted that the first chronic revival might occur as early as the year 2045. And currently there are more than 1,000 living people who have instructed companies to preserve their bodies after their death, in the hope that one day these scientists will bring them back from the dead. Cezanne, well, it's been the ambition of millionaires to have their heads frozen in liquid nitrogen and at some point in the future when we can cure many diseases like cancer and things, we'll simply revive them and in that sense attain a certain amount of immortality. Well, the devil is in the details. First of all, if you suddenly freeze the human body, the problem is that ice crystals begin to form inside the cells. As the ice crystals expand, they rupture the cells. So in other words, freezing the human body seems to work only superficially. But if you look at the human tissue in the microscope, you find massive tearing and disruption of cell walls. Now you may say to yourself, now wait a minute, fish do it, right? Don't they simply get frozen solid in wintertime? Frogs, aren't they being able to thaw themselves out when it's springtime from a block of ice? And the answer is yes, but they do it with antifreeze, that is glucose. Here's how it works. You know you put antifreeze inside your car. So even though outside everything can be frozen solid, but inside your car liquids still flow normally and so your car still runs. 
In the same way, glucose is an antifreeze for frogs and certain fish, that their bodies could still be in liquid form with blood circulating, even though they are frozen solid on the outside. Now, this doesn't mean that at some point in the future, we might be able to create a natural kind of antifreeze for the human body. However, at the present time, the levels of glucose found in frogs and fish that enable them to undergo sustained animation would kill a human being. So it would take genetic engineering. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that those organizations that advertise that you can live forever this way may be misleading the public because when the body is thawed out, what you have is dead tissue. Not long ago, distinguished science presenter Dr. Michio Kaku put a video online explaining why he thinks that cryonics is bogus. Now you'd expect that a man of that learning and knowledge and experience, if he talks about a subject like this, would have done his research and get things right. Unfortunately, just about every single point in that video was incorrect. First of all, let's start with the title. It's not cryogenics, it's cryonics. Cryogenics is a much broader term to do with the engineering of low temperatures. Cryonics is a specific term dealing with the low temperature preservation of human beings for possible future revival. The second point is that he kind of throws offhandedly the idea that this is something maybe for millionaires or multi-millionaires. It's been the ambition of millionaires to have their heads frozen in liquid nitrogen and at some point in the future when we can cure many diseases like cancer and things, we'll simply revive them. In fact, the vast majority of members of our organization are not remotely that wealthy. I signed up myself when I was a poor graduate student, 22 years old, using the mechanism of life insurance, which is what most people use. A couple of dollars a day, that's well within the means of most people. More importantly, Dr. Kaku repeats the old canard that we hear all the time about cryonics, that it can't possibly work because ice will form inside the cells, expand, and rupture the cells. Well, the devil is in the details. First of all, if you suddenly freeze the human body, the problem is that ice crystals begin to form inside the cells. As the ice crystals expand, they rupture the cells. So in other words, freezing the human body seems to work only superficially. But if you look at the human tissue in the microscope, you find massive tearing and disruption of cell walls. Now that's really not what happens. First of all, cells are not bottles, they're more like bags and they can expand. But in fact, when we reduce temperature, ice does expand, but only by about 9% in volume or about 3% in length. That's pretty much biologically insignificant. Now rather than ice forming inside the cells and expanding greatly, what actually happens is the cells will dehydrate. Water leaves the cells and ice forms between the cells. So it's true that there will be some ice formation and damage from that to the cells, but it's not from expansion from within. If it was really as simple as that though, if that was something that destroyed the chance of any kind of biological viability, then we wouldn't be able to do a number of things that we do in fact do already today. There are quite a few tissues that we quite commonly freeze and thaw and use successfully, such as heart valves, major blood vessels, human skin, sperm, and embryos. All those things are frozen and thawed and have not been destroyed. Now, Dr. Kaku mentions that frogs and some other species use something like 70% glycerol as a kind of antifreeze. Now, you may say to yourself, now, wait a minute. Fish do it, right? Don't they simply get frozen solid in wintertime? Frogs, aren't they being able to thaw themselves out when it's springtime from a block of ice? And the answer is yes, but they do it with antifreeze, that is glucose. Here's how it works. You know you put antifreeze inside your car. So even though outside, everything can be frozen solid, but inside your car, liquids still flow normally, and so your car still runs. In the same way, glucose is an antifreeze for frogs and certain fish, that their bodies could still be in liquid form with blood circulating, even though they are frozen solid on the outside. Now, this doesn't mean that at some point in the future, we might be able to create a natural kind of antifreeze for the human body. However, at the present time, the levels of glucose 
found in frogs and fish that enable them to undergo sustained animation would kill a human being. Well, we also use a solution, but one that's far less toxic and has undergone a lot more research than just that simple glycerol formulation. This one has a lot less chemical toxicity to cells and essentially completely eliminates ice formation. It just becomes thicker and thicker as temperature goes down and forms a solid with no internal structure. So it really has eliminated all the damage from ice formation. Finally, it really is not true, and it's not fair to say, as Dr. Kalku does, that cryonics organizations advertise that they can help you live forever. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that those organizations that advertise that you can live forever this way may be misleading the public because when the body is thawed out, what you have is dead tissue. We don't talk about forever, and I challenge him to point to anywhere on our website where we say that. What we're doing with cryonics is essentially extending emergency medicine. We're picking up at the point where today's doctors throw up their hands and say, look, I've tried everything. I've shocked the heart, I've done defibrillation, I've administered various drugs, I've done CPR, and this person, maybe I could bring them back temporarily, but they're pretty much gone, so we'll call them dead. We're stepping in at that point and saying, hold on, let's stop things getting worse by storing this patient at very low temperatures where biological activity halts, wait decades if necessary, and let the far more advanced technology of the future have a chance at fixing their problem and reviving them. So it's really just an extension of emergency medicine. Dr. Kaku, after listening to the points I've made, I hope you'll reconsider your position and withdraw your position that cryonics is bogus. If you still disagree, or you're not quite sure and like to discuss this further, let me extend this offer. We will fly you here to Scottsdale, Arizona, show you around the Alcor Life Extension Foundation, show you all the details of what we do, and if you like, we can sit down, have a debate or a discussion on camera. Are you up for it?